<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is um, Sandy Knapp, and I am the president-elect of the Linnaean Society, so I'm not going to sit in the chair, because that's where the president sits. So I'll just stand here. And I'd like to welcome you all to this meeting. And here today, we're celebrating two things. We're celebrating the 250th anniversary of the founding of the Linnaean Society. This is our 230th year. And we're also celebrating the 1904 admission of the first female fellows to the society. So before we start the kind of business end of the meeting, or the fun part of the meeting, I just want to do the housekeeping bit, which is about what we do if there's a fire alarm. Now, if there's a fire alarm, what we don't do is jump out of the windows, because otherwise you'll be impaled on the railings outside, and that would be very unpleasant. So just file out, out the back. Um, today, during the meeting, pictures will be taken that we will use later in our Linnaean Society publications. So if you have a problem with pictures being taken, please alert the staff. Um, after each talk, we won't have any questions after the talk, so be sure to take notes of what questions you want to ask. What we'll do is at the end of the day, we'll have a general question and answer session where we can um, address all of the topics that have been brought up by the speakers during the day. So in, um, in upstairs in the library, there are two boards, and there's a bunch of a pile of cards in front of each board, and one board is for questions which you would like to have discussed during the question and answer session. And the other board, which I think is going to be a really interesting one, is what advice would you give to a younger version of you starting out? I know what I would say. It's probably quite different to what many other people would say. But I think it's, it's, it's important for us to think about, you know, us people like me who've been around for a long time, to think about what, what advice would you give to the younger version of you? What would you do differently than you've, d you've done over the course of your career? And we'll collate all these images into, into all these, these little cards into an image which we'll send to everybody who was registered for the meeting. Also, in your bag, there's a little coupon. It looks like, a, like, a, like an auction coupon. Don't lose that, because that is what entitles you to your cocktail at the end of the day. So don't lose that. So as I said, we're celebrating 230 years of the society, but also the 1904 admission of the first fellows. And I urge everybody during lunchtime and during af after the meeting is to look at the display in the library because um, Isabel just showed me the, the minutes of the meeting book in which it was voted to change the charters to allow the admission of people regardless of sex. And one thing you'll notice is that the handwriting is really nice. And the second is that the attendance at that session of the Linnaean Society meeting was three times the normal attendance at a Linnaean Society meeting. The vote to admit women fellows, the vote to admit fellows regardless of sex, so let's not say admit female fellows, let's say admit fellows regardless of sex, is, was 54 for and 17 against. So that is a definite simple majority, but you had to have a two-thirds majority to change the charter. So it was a two-thirds majority, which is absolutely fantastic. And one of the things I think is important about that admission of the first fellows who were women to the society is they were not only admitted as members, they were also allowed to attend meetings. Because at that time, at the beginning of the 20th century, which seems like a long time ago now, much of the business of science went on in meetings of learned societies. We didn't have sort of professional scientists in the way that we do now. So barring people from attending meetings essentially meant barring them from the business of science as it went on. So admitting people to meet, attending meetings is very important. And our people have asked me, hearing about this meeting, they've said, oh, you're going to chair that women in science meeting. And actually, I don't think we need to think about it that way. We're celebrating the admission of the first female fellows. But we're also, I think, celebrating the fact that diversity in science is really, really important. As natural historians, we know that diversity in ecosystems is incredibly important. We know that diversity makes for strong, resilient ecosystems. And the same is true for communities of people. Diversity makes us stronger. Diversity makes us better. And it also makes us able to, to confront and achieve those things which are challenging for us in today's society, not only in science itself, but also in society. So I think. We also today, the third thing we're celebrating is just diversity. So I think I've done all the business, have I not? Have I done the business? I'm really bad, I'm really bad at the business end of these meetings, so don't, don't jump out the windows, go out, go out the back. So we will, have, we will have lunch in the library, and the library, um, please do see the library display.